Hello and welcome to that pedal show down here. Mick here, hello. Dulcet tones of the Quarry Angels of the Strum of Velarte. Indeed. Uh, you'll be seeing a slightly odd pedal board shot at this point. Because, don't tell anyone, there's something to reveal. Indeed. Which will happen in due course. But um, what are we talking about today then, Daniel? When we saw the Volante, um man, Nam, a couple of, three years ago, whenever that was. Yeah, P and PC. <laughs> it was PC. Yeah. Um, and it rocked a lot of people's worlds for some very good reasons. Not least ours. Not least, exactly. We had to buy that. We did. Yeah, um, albeit at a trade price, just in the interest of full disclosure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we did pay for it. We did. And it is... Wonderful. So we've talked about um, tape delays before, and the Strymon Volante does really great tape delay simulation. It also does echo rack simulation. We've had echo racks on the show before. So echo racks being the multi head, um, you know, the, a common multi head that people talk about. This Volante also gives you the option to pan those yeah. delays in stereo, yeah. which if I just do this, you can hear the different delays panned in different areas on that stereo Yeah, um, if you're not quite following there, those buttons on the top panel there, um, each set of those buttons represents one head and you've got two heads panned into one amp and two heads panned into the other and you should have heard that very clearly. Dan will just do it again. Stereo delay. Weird. So I had my pick in my hand. That was good. It's nice. Like yeah. <laughs> Tom Waits would have gone <laughs> over the top of it, and then it would have been a hit single. A hit. A hit. <laughs> so what I wanted to do today, it, it, it sparked something in my um, sort of post-COVID jab brain that I wanted to uh, replicate that in my Frankenstein delay board build. Yes. Okay. So if you're not familiar with what we're talking about now, we did a show on tape delay. Indeed. And we started with a single head tape delay. Yep. And we said, what's actually happening in a tape delay? And Dan said, I've got this idea. And he put together this amazing board, which contained the elements of gain. Yes. A gain. Compression. Delay. It had, we had, yep, had some tape compression on there. Um, modulation. Modulation and feedback loop mixed in on top of the original signal. So when you look at your tape delay, whether it is an actual tape delay with rotating tape, or whether you look at your tape delay simulation pedal, there's a bunch of things happening in that device, which Dan broke out into the single parts and put an uh, individual pedal for each one of those parts on a board, mm -hmm. added some stuff, and it was quite the revelation. And lots of people watching that going, wow, can you do this for other effects, please? And your brain goes, boom. Indeed. Um, okay, well, this is what I've come up with to show what's going on in a multi-head stereo uh, delay pedal. Okay, so um, this is where we say goodbye to the Volante. Say goodbye to the Volante. Uh, so we do the reveal? Let's do the reveal. I'll lift the Volante. Okay. You do You do the uh, tablecloth and the saucers. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Ready? <laughs> oh, 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 my God. There you go. Okay, so how are we going to do this? How are we going to explain what's going so on? So what we I'll do, I'm going to strip everything. I'm going to put some, uh, uh, cover some things up, and we'll start at the very beginning, and with some diagrams and things, so you can see and follow along with what's actually going on. But just before we do that, basically what you've got there is what's in the Volante. Pretty much, it's a, it's four delay lines. Yeah. Each with its own delay time, modulation, EQ, 
feedback control, and panning. So you can pan where you want it in the stereo field and level control, of, of course. Okay. <laughs> this, this requires some explanation, I think. Okay, so we'll start with the simplest breakdown of a single delay line. What I like particularly is that you've done an analog version of the digital masking that we normally <laughs> use. T totally. Because that's important, right? Totally. Yeah, totally. I do like that. Great, yeah. great. Okay, so the first thing is my signal is going into a split out mixer with a wetter box. So what's happening is... Let's come right back to here. Okay, so signal going into the tuner. Yep. Then into the DNM drive. Yep. Okay, then out of that, it goes into the splitter mixer, which is the wetter box, right? So that gives me the ability to send out a signal, basically a, an effects loop, and to mix that back into my original tone. Now, why is this really important? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to delay that signal and do all the stuff to it that the delay line will do, but that only works if it's on top of your original dry signal. So this happens in a normal delay pedal. Exactly. In the input, split. Yep. One half goes through, undelayed. Yes. Undelay. Undelay. Yeah. <laughs> and we did actually move the carpet today. <laughs> Yes, we did, didn't we? Oh, yeah, right. Um, Get the underlay gag then? Yeah, I did, I did. <laughs> so I, I had my shot yesterday and my brain is just not there. <laughs> it was, I built this board uh, Tuesday night, all day Wednesday, Wednesday night, and I finished it off early this morning before I came here. And doing this, because uh, my head was like this, and setting up the flashback kill dry, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway, okay, so normal delay pedal. Yep. You have your delay line, which does all the stuff, and then you've got your direct line. Non delayed. And then that gets mixed in. Okay, and that's what we're doing with the wetter so box. That's what so the we'll wetter box does. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, you were seeing that with a, with a graphic there. Okay. So what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what the flashback is doing. Okay, the okay. flashback, all the flashback is doing is delay. So I've now got no direct signal, and all we're going to hear is what's happening with the flashback. Okay. Was that like two, three seconds or something? Yeah, more than really, that. Really long. So the, the, yeah, dry, uh, wet, wet only. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. So what we're doing with the flashback? If you imagine that we've got that um, effects loop, but I'll show you this in the graphic here. I've got this effects loop that I'm mixing back in to the original signal. Okay, so we've got that delay, the the actual delay. And if you think of it in terms of a tape delay, that's the space between the heads. The time it takes for the tape to travel from the record delay to the playback. The delay time. That's yeah. the delay time, yeah. right? Then we've got some modulation. So uh, I've chosen the Jam Waterfall because it's got vibrato and chorus on there. Yeah. And it's beautiful analog lush thing. So if now if I put some modulation on there, I've turned the delay time back down to a reasonable amount. So that sounds sort of that seasicky thing because it's just for bright at the moment. But if I mix back in the original signal. <laughs> So 
So that modulation is only on the repeats, okay? Which gives us that sort of tapey thing. Yeah, and because the vibrato is on the wet side only, once you mix in the dry side, that's when you get your chorus, because chorus is vibrato against the dry. So if yep. I turn that delay time right down, yep. we basically have chorus. There you go, that's chorus. Okay, so we've got the delay, we've got the uh, modulation, and now I've got these little uh, NRG, uh, what are they called, pumpers, they're little like EQ, you can, one thing that we've discovered that was amazing um, to get this, you know, a really essential part of getting this sounds right is being able to shape the EQ, especially the bottom end. And this is only the EQ of the delayed signal. Only the EQ of the delayed signal. Yeah. Okay. Hello, so, Neil, if you're watching, by the way. Indeed. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the, just the wet sound. Yeah. Okay. And so if you just play for us, I'll turn the, I'll, I'll turn the delay as short as possible so we don't get the lag, we just hear the, the um sure. the, the, the wet sound. Sure, I'll play a combination of single notes and chords so that you can hear the difference. So the ability to take away bottom end, um, certainly for for things like uh, echo rec style repeats, is really important. It stops a lot of that muffle thing. I think we did a show once called Character Delay or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And we did we discussed that really what defines the sound of a delay, any delay pedal, whether it's a Boss DD3 or a electro harmonics something or other what it, what defines it is the, the the character of the delayed sound in relation to the dry sound and in this case you're filtering the delayed sound only in exactly. terms of eq exactly that exactly that okay so now i'm going to turn the delay time back up and i'm going to mix that sound back in with the original signal cool <laughs> So we have our delay, but what don't we have? Uh, repeats. We don't have any repeats. We've got one repeat. We've got one repeat. So we've got our delayed sound being modulated, being filtered, going back into the, the loop, and that's what's being mixed. So I was going to say, just before we do the repeats thing. You want to do the pan thing? No, could you do... Um... Could you, we just hear the straight delay and then the straight delay with the modulation and the yes. filtering? Yes, of course. Yep. Every time I hear that on guitar, I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you can hear the difference when you when you filter that sound at the end. Um, it, it doesn't compete with what's going on 
with you know the low register of the guitar. Yeah, it's great, especially important when you start piling on overdrive, which we'll do in a bit. But absolutely, yeah. So okay, so how do we get repeats? What we need to do is feedback the signal after the filter to the input of the delay. Okay. Now, if we just connected a wire there, we'd have uncontrollable feedback because, and then, you know, oscillation. So what we need to do is put a volume pot there and control the amount of signal we send back. So what we do then, we have to split the signal. The signal comes, the signal comes out of the EQ. It goes into the splitter. One side of the splitter goes into the volume control. That heads back to a mixer that's at the start of the flashback because we have to mix our original signal going in and also the feedback signal. <laughs> and this is all happening in your delay pedal. This is all happening in your delay pedal. Yeah, right. Right? So I've got a couple of JHS. I've got the, a splitter and a summer there. And it does this job perfectly. So our original signal and the feedback signal are summed in, sent into the delay, into the modulation, into the filter, into the, into the splitter, sends one signal into the volume pot, controls our feedback, and the other signal goes back to the wetter box. All right, so now if I, if I let some signal go through from the output back to the input of the delay, just hit a note for us. So that gives us our feedback, which is why that control is called feedback, because we're feeding back the signal. So d do me a favor for a second then. If I'm just going to play another note, could we'll do it with the EQ on and then off. Yep. Yep. So here's with the EQ on, off, <laughs> off. So what's... now, because yeah, you, so you tell me what's going on there. Uh, well, presumably each time it goes through, there's getting more and more bottom end rolled off. Exactly. It's filtering yeah. each time it goes through. Which is so important to the sound of those old analog and tape delays. Absolutely. So having the having that filter not just on like a master output of the of the delay sound, having that filter in that feedback loop yeah, right. is everything. Wow. Okay. So we have our delay, we have our modulation, we have our filter, we have our feedback loop. Now let's talk about panning. Okay, so at the moment we've got it, it's just mono lines going dead center, left and right. Yeah. Um, I'll show Mick this and that'll so you can everyone can see it on the screen. If you think about panning, um, it's really funny. Before when I was thinking about this, I designed a mixer panner to do this because I couldn't find anything out there. Yeah. Uh, incidentally, what where did you get the volume knobs from? Oh, like uh, yes, Lazy Bear Electronics in the UK. Right. Massive shout out to Chris, who was a, a, a godsend, because I ran out of time to build stuff. And he's like, yeah, no, I got you sorted, mate. And uh, he did this for me in very quick time. So I really appreciate that. Um, so it's just a pot. So it's just a volume pot. Yeah. All that is is a volume pot. I want one of those on my pedal board. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I'll get you another one. It's just a passive volume pot, yeah? It's just a passive volume pot. Exactly. So that... The signal coming out of the splitter is low impedance. Yeah. It's buffered. It hits that volume pot and then controls the amount of feedback we've got going through that. What value is the pot? Do you know? Uh, I think this is quite a low value because it's designed to work in the scenario. It's, yeah. This is a, it's also designed to work in an amps effects loop. Okay. So I, I, I don't know. It might be 50K. I'm not sure. But here yeah, we yeah. go. Okay. Put anything yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah. Now, um, so that pot. We, you know, what we call a volume pot, a potentiometer, is a variable resistor, okay? Um, but it's also a potential divider. And this is what happens when we're talking about a, a panning circuit. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that goes on, but basically, here's your pot. 
and you've got your three things on it, right? The outside pair are connected to this resist, right? And so that's imagine that's like your resistor that goes across. The inside uh, leg is connected to the wiper. And as you turn your pot, that creates variable resistance. Yeah, right, okay. Right? And if I have my pot, like at the, at the moment, that's right in the center. So if I feed my input to that center leg and I have the outputs left and right on the outside, I'm sending the equal amount of signal to both left and right. If I turn it one way, I have less resistance to the, out to the left output, more resistance, so I'm gonna increase my signal to the left-hand side, decrease it to the right-hand side, and vice versa. So in the simplest terms, that is how we connect out left and out right to you know the outputs, and that's how we control which side we go to. So what we've done here is we've sent, um, instead of the output going directly to the loop on the wetter box, the output goes to the input of the mixer right. with this panning circuit on, then stereo left and right goes back to the wetter box. So now if you play that <laughs> if you play that same delay and I will pan it yep. left and right. Okay. So now we can control whereabouts in the stereo image we want to put that delay. In addition to everything else. In addition delay to... Delay time, yep. feedback, modulation, Filtering, EQ. Yep. Now, just to, to come back to the Volante for a second, most of that, a bit of a rag there, most of that happens in the Volante, doesn't it? You yep. can pan the heads left and right. Yep. Um, I don't think you can affect the tone differently in each of the heads. I think there's a master tone knob, unless you can do it in deep editing. But yeah, I, you might be able to. Yeah, um, modulation, I don't think you can. I think it's a modulation fixed amount across. So I think the modulation and that is, is designed to mimic the echo plex and you can control what sort of echo plex. Echo rec. Echo rec, sorry. Yeah. It's designed to, 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 to mimic that sort of modulation. Yeah, I mean, I guess the reason I mention it is because once you shrink what you're about to see down to this or even something smaller, then necessarily there are some decisions that get made about the totally. things that you can manipulate. Totally. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, so what we've done then, now we've got all that stuff and panning. Well, why don't we split the output from the wetter box four times? Yeah, why don't we? <laughs> It never gets any less ridiculous. <laughs> you showed it to me this morning, I'm like, okay. So what we've done is we've taken that output from the wetter box, we've split that four times, and we have replicated our delay line. We've replicated the um, our delays, we've replicated the modulation, the filter, and the feedback control. And then that all feeds back into the mixer and so we can control the level, we can control the pan of each delay line, stereo left and right back, back into the wetter box. Okay, <laughs> so we've gone from a single head. Yes. And we've now got four heads. We've now got four heads. Um, and let's see, famous delays that have four heads. Echo rec. Yeah. Anything else? Um, Some echo recs, not all echo recs. Yeah, I think the... Yeah, so like the space echoes have got three. Yeah, space echoes have got three. Uh, yeah, it's not massively common to have a four head delay. It, yeah. Is, is kind of where I was going with that. Can we then, um, could we start with, let's start with the basic concept of going from one to two heads and what that means. Okay. And then after that, then we'll get into some weirdness. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so yes, let's start from let's start with two heads, and what we're going to do is just pan the delays left and right. Yeah, and go for like a, I don't know an eighth and a quarter or something like that. I'll turn the feedback off, so we're just going to hear the delays. Yep. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So I'll turn the feedback up. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Let me filter that a little bit. <laughs> You've got to do some playing in a minute because it is just magic. Yeah, totally. It's totally. totally magic. And that's just two heads with a bit of repeat, right? So what I'm going to do now, we got the, at the moment we've got the heads panned hard left and right. Yeah. What I'm going to do now is pan the other two with longer delay times, so it's it's like 30, 70. So yep. it's going to go bang, 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 bang. Okay. All right. So I'll turn the feedback down. So now we're going from two to four heads. Yes. Four delay lines. Yes. And then we'll do some weird stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so if you can just... So what I'm going to do now, I'll give loads of feedback on the shorter delays, less feedback on the longer on the longer delays. Okay. Right? Totally mega. 
Yeah. So it's a, I think it's a really good visual representation of what's going on. Yeah. Um, and so you can see all the elements that you can mess with to get these sounds. Yeah, so the challenge in something like this, obviously, if it's in your Strymon Volante, once you set up those four heads, the Volante controls the delay time relationship between all four heads, yeah, yeah. and you can choose uh, various options on that for classic sounds. And here you're sort of going by ear a little bit. Um, if you if your delay line was controlled by a delay with tap tempo on it, you could tap the tempos in. So what you could do is set up quarter note, dotted eighth note, half note, whole note yeah tap them all in the same tempo yeah and then you get all the different subdivisions going <laughs> okay let's try that then um uh, let's give the let's give the uh the lead of destiny to you so let me see if i can understand this then yeah and operate this okay so up here which one is our level uh knob levels on the left hand side so pairs uh, on the right. Uh, so we go one, two, three, four, yeah? Exactly. So if I want to turn delay lines three and four off. Yep. I do that. Exactly. Okay. What I want to do now then is um, let's turn these off. I've got to push, push hard on those. Push hard. Um, what I want to do is set up a kind of edge type delay. Okay. So an edge type delay would be what? About 300 for the first one or is, it the, sh is the short one firster? The uh, faster, shorter. <laughs> Welcome to Mix a New Dictionary of Words That Don't Exist. So that's how we do an edge style delay. Then we had a quarter note and then the dotted eighth after, just set by ear, and um, randomly added some modulation to it, which may or may not be a bit like edge, but it does at least explain a little bit about how that sound happens. Yeah, yeah, totally. Can we now pan it, which we didn't do? Uh, it was panned left and right. Right, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So now put it in the center then. Sorry, I can't really Sorry. hear from where I'm sat. I do there, I turn the modulation up uh, to make it super spacey and then turn the second delay, delay line off so you weren't hearing that. You're just getting that chorus effect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. Well, the really, one really interesting thing about the modulation, because at the moment we, we're using it on vibrato, if you stick it on chorus, yeah. and then you actually get a chorus modulation in the delay, It gets a bit flangy at the end. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So what I'll do, if I set up some other delay times that work in conjunction with those, yep. but I'll do some like heavy modulation, like heavy EQ, and you know, see what happens when you start mixing those. I'll, I'll leave those as the main delays, yep. but if I have these things going, sort of doing their own sort of thing in the background with loads of, like, loads of um, feedback. Cool. Let's give that a go. Lepiche. C'est grand lepiche. 
I don't know what lapish means. Probably doesn't mean epic. Probably means something <laughs> awful. Le Man, that's nice. I deliberately, deliberately, deliberately was trying not to play very much whatsoever and let the delays do the work. I mean, the majority of it you were hearing all the way through was... That's pretty much what you were hearing with a bit of octave here and there. Oh, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. It just sounds amazing. I mean, it, it really does sound yeah. totally crazy. I mean, we're not, right, we're not suggesting anyone goes and does this. <laughs> Why not? But you can certainly experiment with, um, you know, two delays one after one another or even three for some of these, for some of these, um, types of textures, but remember that needing to affect each one individually exactly. is somewhat difficult. And why stuff like the Dear Old Volante is so awesome. And other fully functioned modern digital delays are so awesome because they give you some of that functionality in each in each line. Wow, amazing. Fun. I think it would be appropriate for you to play us out. Okay. Set up a sound that um, you dig. In the meantime, Thank you for watching. Indeed. Yeah, this was good. Yeah, it was. I just it was one of those ideas that I just like. I can't let this go. I've got to find a way to do this. And I was going to have to build a bunch of stuff, but I'm so glad I was able to find off the shelf things to do it. Yeah, big thanks to JHS, to TC Electronic, for, to Jam Pedals, to Neil at NRG, and to the guys at uh, Land Devices for the mixer. Yeah, yeah for sending all the stuff that, um, for Dan to do this with. So yeah, thanks for watching. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, massive thank you to our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey, where you can buy most of this stuff. Indeed. Uh, and our dear friends in Australia... Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. There are also links in the description below. Yes, please go to sweetwater.com, click on our links and buy stuff. They have trained whales to tow ecologically sound container ships full of hermetically sealed money. Direct to us. Direct to us, which is dragged by trained Navy SEALs. Along. But actual real SEALs, not, you know, not those kinds of no, SEALs. make them Navy SEALs. Yeah. And count them out one by one. Like, or, 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 like that. Whereupon Dan and I can make a mattress and lie sometimes together <laughs> and sleep, sleep soundly. Anyway, yeah, please, please buy stuff. If you, if you click on links at Sweetwater, um, that yeah, will happen. Guaranteed. Like that. that will absolutely happen. You've got to keep that in, so you have to keep all of that in. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, um, okay massive thank you to, to everyone that's gone to that pedal show store dot com yeah. and oh. grab some merch you know <laughs> my favourite is the pocket T where you can put a plectrum look at that indeed <laughs> <laughs> Is it nearly lunchtime? Um, oh yes, that, that pedal show still. Patreons, people on Patreon. Yes, thank, thank you, you very so much, much. Uh, for your kind support of this show. Yeah, amazing. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Have a fantastic day and we'll see you soon. Okay. See, you on, see you on Monday. Yes. For, um, yes. Yeah, Monday. Well, we'll, we'll get loads of questions about this. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So, so come uh, Monday, we'll do a live show. Every Monday, we talk about the last week's show and stuff. Come and hang out. It's so much fun. We'll see you there. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.